good morning. Today is work day and work starts with taking out the trash. So we're going to do that. Uh, then we got some projects to do on uh, the rollback. What else needs worked on? Uh, the Jeep needs a little bit of work. I think those two are fine for now. Mainly the rollback. So we're going to get on that. All right, let's get this thing fired up. We are going to be installing air scales on the rear. We've got some more stuff to load in the toolboxes. We've got a delivery of some more underlift attachments coming, but the main thing is I want to get the air scales on this so I can know for certain where I'm at on my axle weights. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, I got a new sticker. This was just a temporary sticker. I got a new bigger one that actually has the whole like heavy rescue, all that stuff on there. You start up. No more air conditioner. And no, I did not check the oil uh, because I already did that yesterday and haven't started it since. Okay, so I'm laying out how I want the sticker to go on here. And here's a tip uh, because I've made this mistake more than once. When you're trying to put your decal on and figure in the angle like that, wait till the truck builds enough air to air up the cab because you'll put it level and the cab will air up. It's hinged at the front, airbag at the back, and then your sticker's like this. So give it time. side done and on there uh, I got that temporary sticker pulled off kind of wondering if I should have put it like halfway over this kind of how the old logo was I think I actually liked how they had their logo kind of split the difference better than that but eh, this is what it is uh, no bubbles don't use any like Windex or none of that crap I just put it on there and uh, works fine so now I got the bed raised up so that we can get in here to uh, install the air scales I just got to get something to block this up before I crawl in there and we'll get started on that. take this back off and install this first. Okay, so what we did was we tied into the airbags. You can tie into any of the airbags, doesn't matter. This was kind of the easiest one as far as stuff being out of the way. And we just put a T in there. So this is the line that goes from the leveling valve around the backside through here and then goes into the airbag and puts pressure in it. So whatever pressure is in this line is how much air pressure is in all four of these airbags. They are all always the same. So we put a T into the fitting into the bag, then we run a smaller line up here across down here uh, i got to do some more zip tie and a cut off zip tie to the scale now this scale still has to be calibrated we do that by putting a bunch of weight on the drives i'll probably put either that tow probably that tow truck because it's heavier and then i'll go to the dot scales 
put these axles on the scale. I'll even slide this bed way back to put as much weight here as possible and then match this number to what the scale reads by turning this little set screw. And uh, then whatever this is pointed at is how much weight we have on our drive axles. And finally, turn that off, which should reinflate our airbags. So these bags will reinflate, as you can see. Lift the back of the truck up. And then if we come over here to our scale and we open the valve, it is telling us not how much pressure is in the bags, but how much weight based on pressure. And right now it's completely wrong because we haven't calibrated it yet. Actually, that's not super far from wrong. Okay, I lowered the bed back down and rolled it back forward in its normal position. We have our normal full weight on the drives with the aired up. And I know that this truck is 17,600 pounds on the drives empty. So I can go ahead and set this to, that would be 17, let's just a hair under 18 to play on the safe side. And that actually should make this fairly accurate now. Ideally, you're up in the 34, 36 range to set it, so you're as close as possible to legal weight. Uh, for me, with this truck, I can go all the way to 46,000 pounds when towing, so it'd be nice to be somewhere between 34 and 46 when I set it. That way I know it's accurate where I need it the most, but that should get us really close. We'll shut that off. That just closes the valve so that as you're bouncing down the road, you're not spiking this with pressure. And the door is made so that when you shut the door, it pushes that closed anyway. So, yeah, I know it's right on the cones, but this is the best spot to put it so that when I'm running the controls and move stuff backward and forward and on and off the bed, I can come right here and check, move the load, check, run the controls to move that load, check, and just see where I'm at without having to get back up in the truck. So now we're going to clean up all our stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to save all these fittings and all the extra zip ties and keep in the truck along with all this extra hose because that's all stuff you could need when you're towing trucks. We're also going to save this bag. This is a super thick bag actually so we'll use this uh, when I pull the driveline out of trucks I can put the driveline bolts in this bag so that'll work. Alright, we got a FedEx delivery that I've been waiting for. Open. I think the FedEx guy is starting to hate me. Are you kidding me? Hold on. There's supposed to be two of these. And they're 70 pounds apiece. These are fork risers. They go on the crossbar there, as you can see, in place of those receivers. And then instead of dropping the forks into there, you drop them into here and you get a big riser out of it. Because one of the one of the downfalls of this truck over a standard heavy wrecker, it has the lift power of a heavy wrecker. It just doesn't have the lift height that a heavy wrecker can do. So we're trying to pick up stuff in the back. That's all gonna blow away. Uh, this gives you a bunch more height to make up for what you're lacking due to this setup. So this gets your forks up higher and then this big hook on the outside is when you're chain slinging something like how I towed uh, Jesse's truck. It gives you this big pad to put it up against and this hook right here to hook your sling chain into. So very heavy, very handy, uh, but only when there's two of them. And, I just got one, so I guess we still can't use this. Well, now we are going to go for a little drive. We got to go to DMV to get this truck uh, VIN inspection done and get it actually uh, titled in my name. All the all the title paperwork finally showed up, so we're going to take it, get it uh, titled. It is registered. See, there's license plates on it. It's registered to operate to me, uh, but it's not titled to me yet because. 
been waiting on that envelope to show up. So we're gonna head to DMV and get that done. I've always loved this view of Prineville coming down off the hill here where it opens up over the golf course. You can see the big huge courthouse building. It's like this nice just green valley just down below all this flat high desert up here. All right, we got that done at DMV, super quick and easy. So this truck is now titled to me in addition to registered, which is handy. So now on to the next thing. Since it snowed at my house yesterday, we stopped here at uh, Les Schwab and uh, grabbed some tire chains. Those are three rail chains, so that's two pairs. They'll go over all eight tires in the back. So uh, the next two days in a row, I've got toes back and forth over the passes. It's supposed to mix of uh, rain and snow, so chains. All right, now we can head back home, I think. I don't think we have anything else to do out here. One thing that's kind of a bummer is the tow I have coming up not tomorrow, but the next day is about a half a mile right over there, uh, but it's not ready to go yet. So I gotta drive all the way back home and then in two days I gotta drive all the way back out here to get it. It'd be really nice to just go over there and just like get it, but it's not ready. Well, the rain set in, which means it is snowing up in the mountains, which means I am really glad I stopped at Les Schwab and picked up those chains. All right, before we head back home, we're gonna stop at town here and get a burger from the feeding trough because it's like three o'clock and I haven't had lunch yet. So, burger sounds good. All right, we got our burger. It's starting to rain more and more. So we're gonna hop back in the truck and get home. probably turn off the jake brake. Casey, it's not a jake brake, it's an engine brake. Don't care. All right, just getting all the chains laid out across the deck here, make sure they're all like there. Uh, for now, I am just uh, putting them in this milk crate here and I'll ratchet strap that up there to the, the front of the deck until I figure out somewhere to like hang them. And I do have to be strategic. Like I have uh, this top space in these boxes here that I could put them in, but I have to remember that when I have something hanging off that under reach off the back, I can't slide this deck back to get into this top compartment. So things I might need while traveling uh, can't go up in here. So maybe a hanger in here or maybe hanging them right here off this. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with all that yet. I do want to get the automatic tire chains, uh, the ones that go on the bottom of the, the axle hangers there, the U-bolts. I really want to get a set of those for this truck with as much as I'm going to be uh, in the snow and ice with it, but um, I don't have those. So one day I'm going to get those. Uh, if anybody has like a a hookup at a place that sells automatic tire chains, comment down below because I need a set. So for now, we get all those thrown in there, ratchet strapped up there, and then uh, it's getting to be towards the end of the day. Uh, Riley and my wife should be home pretty soon, so we'll wrap this up here, go and get some dinner going, and uh, see you guys on the next one when it will be towing with this thing up over those big mountain passes over there. So uh, just a quick little normal day of working to get ready to work. It's kind of how it goes in your owner operator. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Definitely need automatic chains. This is going to get old real quick. You're going to fall down, so I'm going to get you down.